welcome to this conference all participants, including colleagues and our guests. This event is part of the Innovas project, which is relevant to the topic capacity building programs to support implementation of energy audits in the 2020 Horizon program. We have a very full morning of discussion this morning and Sorry. we can see um, the agenda and the several speeches that are part of this conference, starting with the description and the lesson learned by the Innovas project. The other topics discussed in this conference are the need for a new approach in seeing the energy transition through the eyes of SME management. After the break, we have a speech concerning the challenges as seen by ESCO advisor and related service providers, followed by the city as a catalyst for business transformation and then the role of large companies working with their supply chains. The conference continues with the following topics toward the manifesto for massive change and the need for a dedicated alliance. Finally, we'll have about 10 minutes to summarize the main relevant findings and information provided by the speakers. Concerning Innoveas, it is a 36 month project, involves six countries and 10 partners that provide a long standing expertise and experience in the field of energy efficiency and energy saving. We have addressed the many challenges that energy culture often has to face. One of the main objectives of our project is to create an enabling environment that will allow to implement effectively energy saving measures. As we can see in this slide, our service, or better, our activities, include analysis of the main psychological and organizational barriers that often have prevented the adoption of energy auditing practices, which are not mandatory for SMEs. Basically, we have identified the non-technical barriers that interfere with a widespread adoption of energy auditing practices in SMEs. Other activities that we are currently implementing include informing SMEs, about existing financial incentives, highlighting cost and savings of energy audits and offering training programs, training programs. One of the goals of Innoveas is to develop a capacity building program aimed at enhancing corporate policy toward energy efficiency, towards energy culture and sustainable supply chain initiatives. Finally, the project aims to create a network, a European alliance with the aim of supporting in the coming years, the development of training offer relating to energy efficiency in the industrial and service sectors. Our target group are uh, industrial associations, other intermediaries, that will help promote the involvement of SME in the adoption of energy efficiency measures. Policymakers who will suggest strategies aimed at increasing the number of energy audits in SMEs, energy auditors who will provide technical support to SMEs in order to increase energy saving measures and energy audits. Financial institutions who will be involved in the development of favorable financing proposals 
aimed at supporting the adoption of energy saving measures in SMEs. And finally, SMEs, which are the main target group of our project because they represent a huge energy saving potential and are also the main beneficiaries of our capacity training programs. In uh, this slide, we have listed what we have done so far, which includes analyzing the current attitude towards energy efficiency, as well as the existing regulatory and, and financial conditions that influence the use of energy audits. In this stage, we have already developed 24 web-based modules for the training of SMEs which are available on the Innovea's website and YouTube channel. Furthermore, we have defined the first element for the creation of the network that we have called the European Alliance for Energy Audits in SMEs. You can find more information about our project in the Innovea's website, YouTube channel, and other social media. This is all for me. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Do you hear me? Well, uh, my role is to present the lessons learned so far in the Innovia's project. Um, the <clears throat> well, uh, this uh, presentation is based, uh, is not a presentation of the main findings. Uh, um, it's not a presentation of the main findings of the research activities implemented. It's not a presentation of all the lessons learned so far in the Innovas project. This is a presentation of Innovas finding related to a few topics that are linked to the conference of today. Uh, that is how to sensitize more and better uh, SMEs on energy climate change issues or how to change the narrative about energy audits and reinvent the business uh, towards the SMEAS adaptation on a massive scale of uh, uh, um, energy efficiency measures, how to move beyond the business as usual and outline a strategy that will involve SME more and more and better for a successful energy transition. It is based on four tasks implemented in the frame of Innova's project until now. Three tasks of a work package two, what was a, par, uh, what was a work package devoted to the, the identification of barriers that uh, um, uh, SMEs uh, met in uh, the in implementation of, for the implementation of energy audit and more broadly for the implementation, the design and implementation of energy efficiency measures. Uh, these three tasks were on a state of art of energy culture, mainly, mainly based on a literature review, the analysis of non-technical barrier and the analysis of existing framework. And a task of the first task of the work package three, that was the preparatory uh, work package, which uh, the, uh, the uh, training activities and capacity building activities that in Innovers is implementing now were designed. The first task was on investigating on SME expectation constraints and needs. Uh, but these tasks were implemented at the EU level in gen for the three tasks. And in the five countries uh, involved in uh, the Innovas capacity building and training programs that are Italy, Germany, Poland, Slovenia, and Spain. Therefore, the source of information of this task were a literature review, an online survey addressed to uh, SMEs managers, in-depth interview to representatives for these same SMEs, a little part of these SMEs, 
direct interviews with key informants linked with SMEs uh, for what concerns the energy audits and the implementation of energy efficiency measures. These key informants are the ones already mentioned by Luisa Sileni before, energy auditors and other consultants, policy maker that works but uh, work, but work with uh, uh, SMEs, representative of financial institutions, also working with SMEs, enterprise association and other intermediaries in uh, the novice uh, countries uh, and, Euro and, and at the European level. And then a documentary review in uh, the countries mentioned above of existing regulatory and financial conditions that influence the use of energy audit and the adoption of energy saving measures. What which are the results of uh, our uh, activities that interest the, this conference today? Because I repeat, these are not all the results of our studies. It is just some results that interest the conference of today. First of all, there is a wide heterogeneity of SMEs by size, by sector, propensity towards innovation, the use of technology and energy, the investment capacity, et cetera, et cetera. There is a wide heterogeneity and of regulatory and financial conditions uh, characterizing the different uh, countries, uh, bureaucratic burdens, or opaqueness of programs, et cetera. There is a wide heterogeneity of barriers, both barriers that uh, impede the implementation of energy audits, but what is more interesting, according to me, the uh, wide heterogeneity of barriers that uh, impede the design and the implementation from SMEs on of energy efficiency uh, measure. Here you have uh, in this slide a list of some example of uh, barriers, uh, the reluctance towards considering energy, uh, energy issues, uh, economic and financial issues, uh, lack of information, lack of trust, <coughs> some regulatory and legislative difficulties, and so on. And uh, take into account uh, this uh, diversity, this, uh, this uh, diversity, this wide heterogeneity of SMEs, it is necessary uh, to need, a, a, there is a need of a target appro targeted approach able to consider exactly this wide heterogeneity and the wide heterogeneity of context. And there is also the need of high flexibility in proposing energy audits and not only uh, implementing energy audits, but also adopt other equivalent measures that uh, uh, perhaps in some cases are better than energy audit for uh, reaching the same uh, result. Therefore, we need not only uh, have, uh, be, uh, be uh, consider energy audits, but also some other audits like a carbon audit, or, but also <clears throat> to adopt simplified approaches in the auditing processes, but also adopt uh, beyond energy audit uh, over schemes uh, like flexible support, supporting accompanying programs for uh, SMEs, network, and so on. This is the why uh, based on the diversity of and the wide heterogeneity of SMEs. Another result is that we have not only to consider uh, SMEs, but we have to consider a multiplicity of actors, the so-called actor of the context that I already mentioned before, energy auditors, policy makers, financial institution, uh, financial institution official, industrial association, etc. And we have to consider not only the obstacle that uh, SMEs uh, met in the implementation of energy audit of uh, over energy of broadly the energy efficiency measure, but also to consider the obstacles that meet the other actors, uh, like energy auditors, like uh, policy makers, like financial, uh, financial officials, uh, 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 enterprise association, etc. And we have to remove not only the obstacle linked to, to uh, related to SMEs, but also to remove the obstacle related to the other actor. Therefore, we need, uh, there is the need of a structured discussion between SMEs and all the other actors, first of all, to determine the constellation of interest in, of the concerned, par concerned par parties. And the various actors have to learn how to play their respective role. We have to build a sort of ecosystem among the different actors, and we have to improve communication. 
in a few words, we have to create an enabling environment for SMEs aimed at their insertion in the general trend of energy uh, transition. And all the actors have to contribute to this. this. This is not a problem only of SMEs, it is a problem of all the actors also working with SMEs. Another important question is that the auditor or all the, all the professionals that uh, works uh, that work with SMEs should be not considered only as consultants, but better as enablers. Uh, the energy auditor, the SMEs consultant, should be aware of, uh, uh, for instance, there is many, uh, many, many approaches uh, with SMEs, not only audits, but can follow a multiplicity of schemes, but also other assistance, assistance schemes. Uh, these schemes uh, should be as far as possible personalized, uh, and the assistance should not only identify the main problem of SMEs, uh, but also uh, design a recovery and implementing plan. Audits are not only necessary to adopt energy efficiency solution, but, uh, uh, but also to uh, find a solution without formally implementing energy audit. And audits represent uh, only a special measure uh, that can be, eff can, and can be effective only if uh, they support the identification of other ener energy efficiency measures. And we have also to consider that uh, energy efficiency measure can be adopted also without energy audits, uh, and that energy audits can not, not, not always, only in uh, a little percentage of cases, are followed by effectively the implementation of energy efficiency uh, measures. Well, therefore, uh, we have to go from a business as usual, uh, the business uh, as usual now that we are now, to uh, uh, what I can call the, um, uh, an, uh, an energy pro environment uh, culture. And uh, uh, this, for instance, uh, uh, entails uh, to valorize. The, the so-called innovative env environmentalist SMEs that exist. Among the SMEs, there, are, there is a uh, percentage of, me, of SMEs that we can consider green SMEs or RSV SMEs that, works, that work in the green, uh, in, uh, the, the, green uh, uh, the green context and that have uh, very advanced experience uh, in their contribution to energy transition. The, the role of, his, of his, these SMEs should be uh, valorized. We have to consider that the problem for SMEs uh, is uh, just for very few SMEs, the problem is to reduce costs, uh, energy costs, because energy cost is marginal. Uh, it is more important that uh, for more, many SMEs to be, uh, to be recognized by their customer as a pro-environmental actor. And this could be more important, and this is a result of the survey that I mentioned before. For instance, SMEs confer, confer higher relevance to the concept of green reputation. And we have also to consider uh, the uh, issue that we deal with today with the broad context of economy recovery after the COVID-19 emergency, uh, for instance, the European Green Deal, by a growing enver environmental concern. In this framework, it is important to look at, uh, at the future proactively, avoiding to think that the recovery will, be, will, see, uh, the recovery will see a return to a business of, of, as usual, to, uh, context before the crisis, uh, the situation before the crisis. Therefore, we have to consider the particular circumstance, the deep crisis that uh, all, all of us live today. Let me tell, let me use this expression as an opportunity for uh, uh, for innovation, for innovation among the SMEs towards a pro, -environment, pro environmental culture. This is, these are more or less the main results that I wish to share with you, and thank you very much for your attention. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Innoveas uh, online conference on how to engage SMEs in the green transition. Thank you, Luisa. Thank you, Gabriele, for your first introduction on Innoveas and its uh, intermediate uh, insights and results. My name is uh, Bruno Delapierre. I'm the founder of Heponomy, 
Happonomy is happiness and economy squeezed in one word. We're an organization working on sustainable transformation. And I'm glad to uh, be your host and co-moderator for this morning. Um, we're broadcasting from Leuven. Leuven is a, a small Belgian city, 100,000 people, but not just any city. Uh, a couple of years ago, Leuven was internationally recognized as being the front runner or one of the front runners in Europe uh, re regarding green transition. They uh, won the Green Leaf Award in 2018. And just a few weeks ago, Leuven was elected by the European Commission as being the most innovative city in Europe. So what better place than Leuven to uh, host this conference? But obviously, as you have noticed, we're not limited to, uh, to Belgium. We already had a, an Italian uh, introduction uh, this morning. As you can see, I'm uh, not alone in the couch. Um, next to me is uh, Patrick Rahan. Patrick Rahan is an uh, innovation expert with a speci specific expertise in strategic foresight, has worked on multiple uh, energy-related projects, and uh, above all, he's the innovation lead within the Innoveas Consortium. Good morning, Patrick. Good um, morning, Bruno. You, uh, you um, have uh, uh, some thoughts to share on why we uh, need a different perspective. And, for, and after that, you are also going to moderate the first panel uh, discussion um, from the perspective from SMEs. Gotcha. So what I'll do, I'll uh, leave the conference in your able hands for the next hour. And uh, the conference is yours. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm waiting for my slides to come up. Okay, so my session is called Beyond Business as Usual, but before I talk about that, it's probably a good idea to resume. What is this business as usual? What is the thing that we are trying to improve upon? So for that reason, I put up a slide, first of all, about the number of SMEs we have in Europe. Uh, here you have a summary of the situation. There are, about, uh, there are more than 24 million <coughs> companies in Europe. Uh, of those, about 22.8 uh, million are SMEs. And we have some legislation called the European um, Energy Efficiency Directive. This obliges all large companies in Europe to carry out energy efficiency audits uh, at least once every four years. And uh, part of what we're looking at in the Innovase project is the idea that, uh, you know, should we extend these audits to SMEs, uh, is this a good tool to enable them to take on board uh, and implement energy efficiency measures? Now, the, if my slides are covered by a, a dialog box, <laughs> it would be nice if you could remove those. Uh, thanks. Um, so, <clears throat> the general wisdom is that SMEs don't have the time or the energy or whatever to either pay for energy efficiency audits uh, and certainly not to implement the projects. So this to some extent is our starting point. And um, aside from the veracity of this fact, which we will challenge later on, um, we looked around at some of the energy efficiency agencies in Europe and what they're doing in terms of audits. And doing a very simple back of the envelope argument, we find that if these guys are to audit every SME in Europe uh, at least once uh, between now and 2050, uh, with a view to uh, helping them complete their green transition, um, they would have to increase the rate of auditing by a factor of 15, at least. Uh, this is huge. Uh, and if they were to audit the SMEs twice, they would have to increase it by a factor of 30. And I think this is already a pretty conservative estimate of the amount of auditing that needs to be done to be able to determine that SMEs have uh, played their part in the transition to what we call net zero uh, in 2050. So putting it very rigorously and scientifically, our conclusion is that there is no way in hell that SMEs are going to play their role in the green transition in Europe if we continue doing things the way we do them now. Now, 
when you're faced with a big problem, uh, it's good to take a step back and try to look at it from different directions. And one of the things uh, I was able to do in 2019 before the pandemic struck was to attend a meeting uh, in Brussels of an organization called ERIC, the European Resource Efficiency Knowledge Hub. Uh, the whole point about this is that uh, resource efficiency is very closely linked to energy efficiency in the sense that if you reduce your use of resources, you also reduce the energy that is embedded or implied in the production of those resources. So it was really interesting to attend this conference and see what people had to say. One of the speakers was a guy called Janusz Potosznik. Uh, many of you probably know him already because he used to be the Minister for the Commissioner for the Environment in the European Union. And he put up this very interesting and provocative slide uh, about the behavior of companies from the point of view of their cost structure. And you see this line down at the bottom, this orange line, that corresponds to the amount that companies are spending on energy. And it is compared with the lines above, which is what they spend on labor and what they spend on material inputs. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that what they spend on energy is relatively low compared to all of their other costs. So this means that there is a challenge uh, for companies in the sense that if you want to make cost savings by increasing your energy efficiency, there's a whole range of other things that probably give you bigger savings right away than reduction in energy efficiency. And this suggests that we need to change the way that we look at this if we're going to get action uh, on it. But again, recall that material inputs have an indirect energy load and reducing your material inputs is actually a way to increase your energy efficiency. The audits that are carried out based on this European Energy Efficiency Directive don't actually take these things into account. So at the very least, there's a need to upgrade this approach to take account uh, not only of the direct use of energy, but indirect uses as well. Now, another really interesting thing that was mentioned is the fact that energy is only, you know, energy efficiency and the, the energy transition is really just part of a bigger issue, which is the climate. The, the goal that we're really pursuing, uh, pursuing in all of this is to deal with the, the crisis of climate change, which is already happening. It's not something that will happen many years in the future or in 2050 or in 2030, but it's something that is being played out around the world right now in wildfires and in the destruction of natural habitats, uh, in volatility of food prices and pandemics. So this is the real issue is climate change and that comes down to carbon management. And under the topic of carbon management, energy efficiency is just one of the things that you need to pay attention to uh, in order to manage uh, carbon CO2 emissions and deal with this, what is actually a climate crisis. So um, on the subject of carbon, one of the things that I discovered is that there's a whole universe of different types of auditors that are working with companies, large and small, including SMEs. Uh, and in particular, some of them operating in Belgium. This is one example, a company called CO2 Logic. Uh, they work with companies to reduce their carbon emissions. And within this bigger agenda of reducing emissions and dealing with the issue of climate change, uh, of course, there is the issue of uh, energy efficiency. So what's interesting is that these companies note that they have increasing demand from SMEs for their services. And all of these stories that we've been told that SMEs don't have the resources or the time or the interest to deal with issues such as energy efficiency uh, are really not quite true. And they deserve another look because many companies are interested in the climate and their approach to it is through addressing and reducing their CO2 emissions. And among the actions that they have to take are actions that include switch to renewables, energy efficiency activities, resource efficiency activities, and also carbon sequestration. And this issue of carbon sequestration is very interesting. Um, CO2 Logic in particular told me great stories about projects they carried out. Some of these involve planting trees in Madagascar. Uh, some of them involve planting trees in Belgium. 
And so this, at first sight, it seems, it seems far away from the whole subject of energy efficiency. But as we'll see later on, it really is very close to the whole topic of the energy transition. And it's part of a series of things that we absolutely need to do. Um, and probably it's an easier place for SMEs to start rather than more complex issues such as energy efficiency, building renovations, and all of the costly uh, but necessary uh, actions that they will one day have to take. Thanks. Um, I mentioned this vast uh, universe of, of auditors um, on the subject of carbon. One of the organizations I came across, which impressed me very much, is called CDP, the Carbon Disclosure Project. So this was initially aimed at uh, big companies, but nowadays it also works on behalf of investors, cities, communities, etc. And we'll see later on, uh, it has started to deal with company supply chains. Uh, 70 or 80 percent of the emissions of large companies are actually in their supply chains. And so what has happened so far is that the big companies that have signed up and made declarations in line with the, um, uh, with the uh, agenda of the Carbon Disclosure pro uh, Project, uh, these companies have addressed what are called scope one and scope two emissions uh, up until recently. And in the language of CDP, scope one and scope two are emissions that a company can deal with directly on its own uh, because they it really has to do with the internal behavior of the company and then there's something called scope three emissions we'll come back to that but this organization cdp uh, is really growing in strength and uh, again it not only deals with small uh, companies but also cities and large companies as well and the needs of investors my clicker doesn't seem to work anymore. Thanks. So coming back to this issue of, you know, where does, you know, carbon sequestration fit into this picture? And is it really necessary to talk about this uh, as part of a conversation about energy efficiency? And last year there was a meeting of the International Energy Agency and they showed a very interesting graph uh, where they compared the way the world works already and goals such as sustainable development goals and they look at the gap and they estimate what needs to be done to bridge this gap and within that uh, just switching to renewable energy sources is not enough we need to do energy efficiency work as well and not only that we also need to do other activities such as carbon capture and sequestration so the point is that when we talk about energy efficiency, we're only talking about a partial solution to a bigger problem. This is the problem of managing climate change. And if we want to solve this problem, it's not enough just to do energy efficiency. We also have to deal with the switch to renewables, and we also have to consider uh, carbon capture, utilization, and storage. And this is what's interesting about the work of auditors like CO2 Logic is that they have attacked the problem of climate change on behalf of SMEs, but starting with the issue of carbon capture and storage. Uh, you measure your carbon footprint. There are things that are simple and easy to do that immediately allow you to reduce uh, your emissions. Uh, and once you jump on the train, uh, this train of dealing with the carbon issue, there's a whole range of other things that you can do uh, as time allows and as you are ready for it. But certainly the carbon sequestration issue seems like a, a really good place to start. And the other thing is that it gives really great stories to tell your employees, your clients, your customers, etc., the communities in which you're embedded. Stories that are much more compelling and much more interesting than simply reporting that you made a saving of a thousand euros a year and on your cost of energy. So the International Energy Agency, they published a report this year called the World Energy Outlook. And uh, it was just a few days ago when they launched this report. 
And they uh, looked at two things. One is the impact of COVID on the situation because with the impact on the global economy, energy use has fallen a lot. It's really been quite dramatic, uh, but that doesn't save us. And the point that uh, they wanted to make in this report is that progress is just not quickly enough. And the previous year where they made this comparison between what we're doing now and um, uh, the sustainable uh, development goals, uh, here they talk about you know, where we can go based on the commitments of, of national governments, where we need to be uh, if we are to achieve what are called the sustainable development uh, goals, and where we need to be if we're to achieve net zero uh, in 2050, which is the ultimate goal of the European uh, Union. And so you can see from this diagram, it's a little bit fuzzy, but you can see that there's a huge gap between the commitments made, the sustainable development goals, and what we need to do to achieve net zero. And the general message out of this meeting is that we need to do much more. We're not doing enough and we're not doing it quickly enough. And among the things that we need to do is, uh, again, three types of action. And they boil down to switching to renewables, improving your energy efficiency, and capturing carbon. Uh, they've worded it in a slightly different way this year, but ultimately it's the same argument except with greater urgency that they're making this year. Now, coming back to the CDP, I just want to mention that, uh, you know, I mentioned the whole issue of supply chains. Uh, the big companies have gigantic supply chains. Sometimes hundreds of thousands of SMEs are in the supply chains. And these same big companies uh, have made commitments under the pr CDP program, the Carbon Disclosure Project. And they've made commitments like, we want to be carbon zero by such and such a date, 2030, 2040, 2050, et cetera. Different companies have cho chosen different dates. And the reality is that sometimes 70%, 80% of all their emissions is with their suppliers. So they've dealt with their own emissions first, and now there's, in the last couple of years, they've started to look at the emissions of their suppliers. And this is a complex issue because the suppliers are organized in tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three, all the way down to the farmers in terms of textile and food companies. And as we know, the farmers are not quite participating in the uh, carbon economy until now. This is probably going to change quite dramatically in the coming years. But the point about it is that if I'm a small company and if I get a letter from my big client telling me that my emissions are its problem and that they want me to explain to them what am I doing to reduce my emissions, uh, at that stage, I have an existential problem on my hands. So the whole question of, you know, how much do I spend on doing an audit, whether or not I act upon the recommendations of the audit, all of those questions go out the window. We're dealing with an existential threat to the company. And this should be an issue of interest, not only to the company, but also to uh, re managers in public uh, administration who look after the health of the economy. They need to make sure that their businesses are paying attention to this and acting on this, because if they don't, uh, it could mean an end to the company and loss of jobs uh, for the economy in the future. So anyway, one of the companies that has looked at this is Unilever. You might uh, know Unilever. It's a gigantic company with huge supply chains. Uh, it's been challenged like many companies recently because of the COVID uh, crisis. And they gave a presentation recently about their COVID response. And as part of this presentation, they point out that, you know, listen, guys, COVID is just one of a series of crises that we have to deal with. There's an economic recession coming down the line. Uh, there's also the issue of climate change. And look at the big wave behind this. It's all about biodiversity, a threat in the collapse of biodiversity. Now, the point is that if these are the threats that all of the big companies have to deal with, they will be asking the small companies in their supply chain to address these threats. And that means requiring them not only to act upon uh issues such as energy efficiency and the switch to renewables but also on issues such as biodiversity as well so we 
The point is that we need to recognize that uh, small companies are going to be under pressure to act on a range of issues uh, in the coming years. And only one of those will be uh, energy efficiency. There's a whole range of other things that they will have to act on. And so we need to view the strategic needs of small companies from this broader perspective uh, if we're to get action. Thanks. Now, one of the uh, coming back to this universe of, of auditors, uh, one of the things that's um, uh, one of the auditing trends is the auditing of what's called natural capital. And natural capital is a, a really interesting concept. And it, in a sense, it's a reminder to us of work done by the Club of Rome back in the 70s, where they spoke about limits to growth. And their point is that we live in a planet with limited resources. We have a tendency to overconsume, And especially as the population grows, as economic prosperity increases, uh, this consumption is going to run away. And we will end up dealing with uh, very serious global problems of getting access to resources that are essential for economic activity and also for the life of beings on the planet. And when we talk about natural resources, we're talking about things such as uh, soils, good quality soils, uh, access to drinking water, sand for construction, etc. But we're also talking about natural habitats such as forests, which we often describe as the lungs of the world, uh, and coral reefs. Coral reefs are where the food system in the ocean begins, and they've been devastated in recent years. And actually, you know, those who are interested in nature and read a certain literature are probably aware of this. But the point is that we're, we're, we're coming to a time where we need to uh, deal with this as well. And so in the accounting that is being done uh, nowadays, uh, we not only have to account for energy, <clears throat> for example, using the proxy of CO2, uh, we also have to measure our impact on natural capital. Now, big pressure is being put on large companies to act in this way. Uh, they're trying to pass this message on to their suppliers at the level of the farmers, etc., looking at things like the exploitation of forests. Um, they're making big efforts to do this, but the point is that um, SMEs will have a role to play in this as well, uh, because the SMEs in particular, those that produce intermediate products in supply chains, they're going to have to play their part in giving visibility to these issues and allowing the larger companies to act upon them so that they can credibly claim at the end of the day that they're doing everything they can to manage limited natural resources. So what I'm suggesting is that there probably is a much uh, bigger uh, issue uh, to address. Now I'd like to come back uh, for a minute to this ERIC meeting uh, that that we had in September of last year. Um, one of the um, uh, speakers um, spoke very eloquently uh, about the role of clusters. There are more than 2,500 clusters in Europe. And these clusters are often where new ideas get piloted and, and pioneered, including ideas related to the circular economy, resource efficiency, etc., ideas which are essential to this transition to net zero, uh, which we would like to achieve by 2050. And uh, one of the uh, points though that was made is that change is not happening quick enough, that we need to move ahead much more quickly than we're doing right now uh, and we need change that is not only systemic, but at scale. So I'm here today saying that we need to move beyond business as usual. The same message has been repeated by the International Energy Agency only a few days ago uh, with the release of their report. 
Uh, last year, a similar message was sent out by um, uh, a very interesting lady who has won prizes for the management of um, for the management of her cluster in Spain, uh, and to some extent has become a guru or one of the visionary leaders, uh, explaining and pushing ahead the boundaries of what clusters are trying to achieve across Europe. 